<laughs> Jesus. I'm going to get straight into this. It's It might be a long video. I don't know. We're going to go over offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. The Eagles might have hired defensive coordinator and Vic Fangio as of right now. Nick and Roseman's, you know, press conference. Lot to talk about. Take out the golden nuggets from those aspects of the press conference. Um, but a little worrisome. And some stats will come up here. And it's going to be really interesting. Um, the Eagles might have made an official hire already for a defensive coordinator pretty damn fast. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Well, I mean, I guess no time was wasted with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, on top of everything else, you know, we had the Howie Rose with Nick Sirianni press conference. Now, number number one of the situation is that Nick and Howie were late to the press conference, like 25, 30 minutes. Okay, which is kind of like, hmm, I wonder if they found out something. They were on the phones. They were held up for a little bit because of a specific reason. Because during the press conference, Vic Fangio was fired. Okay. He was fired by the Miami Dolphins, which was really interesting. Um, after a year. Now, this is the guy that Nick, you know, that Howie has wanted. Uh, Vic Fangio is the master class of this Bren don't break scheme that I cannot fucking stand with a passion. Okay, now I think one of the reasons, and now we'll go, we'll go back because Vic Fangio was a consultant for the Eagles the Super Bowl year in 2022. Okay, how much say did he have in the Super Bowl? How much say did he have in that defensive scheme that Gannon was apparently running, which I don't think so because I saw a different defense with Gannon this year. How many cooks were in the kitchen that year with that defense? Since we're starting to see how when Nick takes over game planning, it's really bad. And then when we take over, you know, more game planning towards the playoffs and then getting into the Super Bowl, it just all fell apart. Even Vic Fangio uh, did deny a report, or not deny, he said he wouldn't deny it that he was going to be the next defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles right before the start of the season happened this year. Okay, and the 23 season started. I mean, he really didn't deny any of that, that it was going to happen. But the illegal tampering that Jonathan Gannon was not fully focused between the NFC Championship game to the Super Bowl and was more worried about that than really, you know, winning a championship and getting your defense, you know, ready for the Super Bowl, which ended up in the Eagles losing. And we hated Gannon. And then now we're starting to know how, whose hands are on this defense. Okay, now. I could say to myself that they hired Desai because he was a Vic Fangio apprentice, okay? He was a disciple. I'm, I'm tired of hiring disciples, okay? I'm tired of hiring guys that are the counterpart to the success of a coach that we could have had or had and left. Sean Desai was a defensive quality control guy with the Bears for a few years under Vic Fangio as defensive coordinator. Then... Sean Desai took over as defensive coordinator in 21 and statistically did not look that bad, okay? Um, and Vic Fangio is the actual guy that has started what this scheme is, okay? More reports coming out. Vic Fangio has wanted to move closer to PA, and that's been another rumor of what's been going on. And I think this is why the Eagles, like this is why Howie and Nick were late to the press conference. Um, they totally denied during the press conference. Someone actually asked about Vic Fangio as a new defensive coordinator. The report came out and Nick did not confirm it. Howie did not confirm it at the press conference at all. Like they completely lied to her face or they really haven't spoke to Vic Fangio at all. Okay. Um, why he, why Fangio was, was fired from Miami. I don't know. A lot of Miami players seem to be really pissed off, um, online right now. If you look at the defensive ranks for the Miami Dolphins in 23, yeah, 323.3 yards game allowed 11, 5.1 yards per play allowed nine, 27 takeaways, eighth, 56 sacks, third, 27.7% pressure rate, third, it's statistically it's pretty good it's not too bad to be honest um because you're getting the actual guy that knows how to use players you know i i, I don't like the scheme i'm not gonna if they hire fangio I, i'm not going to like it okay but 
they don't have, okay, which makes sense. I even looked at the roster in general for Miami. Fangio will have will need his own players. And there's no way that Slay and Bradbury are working this scheme. Okay. The Eagles are empty at safety. Sidney Brown is going to be, you know, he's got the torn ACL. He's going to be gone until next October. Kevin Byard's a big is a big money saver. So they're going to probably get $13, $14 million by cutting him. He's got one more year left on his deal, but they're probably going to cut him. The Eagles need that $13, $14 million. So you're completely empty at safety right now. Linebacker is a fucking disaster right now. And, you know, um, Howie Roseman at the press conference talked about the linebacker position and said, hey, you know, Zach Cunningham was a great player for us, and he still has a lot of faith in the Kobe Dean going into next year. I'm like, how do you have faith? I know you got to say good things about the players. You can't throw your players under the bus, but let's just say, like, linebacker is a disaster right now. There's no, I mean, there's the only youth that we have at the position is Nicobe Dean. You dipped in the free agency, what, three, four times? You have Isaiah Rogers coming back from the gambling stuff this year to play the next nickel cornerback because Avante Max is probably not going to be here, not on a $10 million cap hit. It's not going to happen last year of his deal. And like I said, Xavier Howard, Jalen Ramsey, you don't have those types of corners on your team right now. I don't like the shit that Slay said this year. I don't, Bradbury has been, not, I mean, if there's no pressure with your front four, Bradbury is not going to do anything. He's going to be a lost cause, should not be getting paid $12, $13 million a year for what at this point, and I want to move on. So Fangio is going to have, they have to change how they draft, and, they, and they're going to be spending some money in free agency. There's no doubt about it. Okay, because this defense, it cannot run what Fangio wants. There's there's just no fucking way. Your corners are a weak, your corners are a weak position. Linebackers are a weak position. Safety's a weak position. And yeah, I think they need another edge rusher this year. Simple as that. Like I said, I don't like this scheme. And I think the Eagles were trying to substitute missing out on Fangio, the Eagles being pissed off about it, and hiring the disciple of Sean Desai, which Sean Desai got fired, or not really fired, but put to the booth, and Matt Patricia coming right in, which Nick had, Nick Sirianni had some things to say about, it was his decision to fire Desai. Howie Roseman said that Nick went to him about the situation, and it was accepted by Howie. So, Nick has been giving a lot of control this past season, okay, how he has accepted terms, how he didn't really have final say in the Sean Desai firing, but Nick's with the excuse of, you know, he thought it would make the team better, and obviously it didn't because you gave up 27 points or more with Matt Patricia than the 22 with Desai, and Desai at least didn't give up the big play, not going to give Desai a medal or, you know, clap my hands together for him, but it looked a little bit better. Not saying that much, but it looked better in some cases. So philosophy with free agents, priority in the draft has got to be completely changed. I'm not saying don't draft offensive linemen. I'm not saying don't draft any trench guys anymore on on both lines. But I'm saying they have to, you got to put money into linebacker. You have to put money into safety. You know, you need some hybrid guys on this team. You need this team to look at, you need... If Vic Fangio comes here, maybe it will generate, you know, interest from players that are free agents that want to play in his scheme or really like him as a coach. I have no idea. I am not a fan of this scheme at all. I I can't stand it. But you're not getting a disciple coach. You're getting the main man. The main man that runs this scheme, this Fangio scheme, is the man himself. That was here as a consultant for the Eagles on their Super Bowl run. Okay? It looks like the deal is already done at this point. I, I don't know. I uh, I mean, Josina Anderson put out a tweet saying, I'm told the Eagles are internally currently expecting Vic Fangio to be the next defensive coordinator. Per source, through GM Howie Roseman just reportedly said his press conference that the organization has a lot of good targets we're working through. Fangio has part ways with the Dolphins. ESPN first on, on his departure. So, I you know, that's kind of weird how he just left. I don't know if Fangio left on his own and said, you know what, I'm going to go to where I really want to be. Um, and if Fangio wasn't here in 22, I probably would say, like, let's wait and see if it's actually official. But guys, it seems like it's pretty damn official. 
you don't have the roster for his scheme. This defense is going to change. I I don't know. You have three positions that are soft, and you have one and you have your your trenches on the defensive line, which needs another guy, a young talent that you don't have a joy. Like I mean, look, it's a three four scheme at the end of the day. Jordan Davis will be a full time nose tackle. Reddick will probably be in coverage. I don't know how this is going to work. I really don't. You know, maybe they like Nolan Smith better as a linebacker. They'll cross train him. I I have no idea, but I feel like the Eagles really have to look at other candidates and not just jump on this shit immediately because oh, Vic Fangio, we got to get him now. Like we have to, or Vic. Look, I don't know. Vic Fangio was fired, but I wonder if Vic Fangio left and said, ah, I wanted some some type of change, or maybe he didn't like what was going on. I mean, I mean, Miami had a good season. I mean, it's not like they had a bad season. How? Why would they give up on on Fangio that quick? is baffles my mind a little bit just a little bit is all i ask um so that is interesting and it's not official by the eagles yet i mean let me just look right now just to see i don't think it's even official yet um but i don't i don't feel great about it i'm not feeling fantastic but the only positive thing about vic fangio coming here is that this is the man that created his own system is in the building. This is the guy. But you can't continue with this raw this defensive roster. Could could it benefit the the trenches sure. You know, but I don't think you have those punch in the mouth hybrid type guys in your defense that can move around and that can call you. I I just I I just I just don't like seeing the corners off that many yards. I don't like that your defensive line can't hit home. But statistically for Fangio's defense, it looks really good. So maybe, you know, we beat Miami this year. That was probably one of our best games we had defensively where we played stout defense against Vic Fangio's defense. You know, I thought we played really well um, against, you know, that track star offense in Miami. I thought that was one of our best games we played this year. Uh, but every game has been like a different story. And I feel like nothing's been consistent. No changes, um, no adjustments. Um, and, you know, Nick defended the whole reason of firing Desai or moving him and that it would help the football team. Like, ah, come on, man. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's the news on Fangio. Not official by the Eagles yet, but it's looking pretty... I mean, they love this guy. And... They better bring in some monster dogs in the building with whatever that's going to help this scheme. I'm not a fan of it. I fucking hate it right now. I like Fangio as a coach. I think players want to play for him. And he's a vet, an old veteran coach. But he's not really that aggressive. Um, you know, but pressure-wise, he's gotten a lot of it with Miami. So we'll see what changes are going to be made if he's hired, but we'll see. I know this is going to take forever to talk about because it's just you have to go into the depths of I, I don't want to hire disciples from successful coaching. I don't want to hire, oh, well, he worked with this guy that was really successful. So just by hiring him, he's going to be successful. No. And part of it is Nick Seriani having his hands on everything. I mean, it was to the point where we went to this press conference and someone, even one of the beat writers even asked him, like, what is your role? What is your role going to be? You know, like, what is your job? <laughs> like, what? What are you doing? Are you, where are your pom-poms? Are you gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you know, give me an E, give me an A, give me a G. It's like, I don't even know what to think anymore. Um, so the reporter says, if the OC will be in charge of the offense, the DC in charge of the defense, what will your role be? Nick Jarrett says, head coach of the football team. Boy, uh, I guess it will be very similar in what it is now. Does that mean sitting in on the defensive meetings at times? Maybe, Jesus. Instead of always being in offensive meetings, my job is to be the head coach of this team, not head coach of the offense, not head coach of the defense, but head coach of the football team. Okay, that sounds good, I guess. Um, so he's a head coach. Wow, that's a great answer. That was a great answer from Nick Seriani that he's the head coach. But yeah, there was something said um, about... Uh, the the offense in general though. So the offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators they will hire. Nick will let them have the control over play calling, which was said at this press conference. Are they going to hold their word to it? I don't know. The offensive coordinator will run the offensive scheme. The defensive coordinator will run the defensive scheme. And 
Nick said that. So I'm holding him accountable for this shit. Because then I, we get a whole nother thing. I just want to be the head coach and let the coordinators be the be who they are. But then he says, oh, you know what? We're going to... Not not to say we're not going to take some of the mesh concepts, some of the old concepts that have worked with the Eagles the last few years, and I want to give my ideas to the whole scheme in general. You know, shit like that, which I can't stand. He says, oh, Nick Sirianni says, OC will bring his own scheme. Be the play caller, but we'll also mesh. Huh. Do you know a mesh concept? Uh, <laughs> from what's worked well for the Eagles over the past three years. So it, it's just like, Nick saying that he's letting the coordinators have their own scheme, but then he's saying that he's going to, you know, tiptoe his his way in there and and give and 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 you know, I don't want him to be a part of anything. I don't know why he's the head coach. I don't know why he's here because he's doing nothing but hurting this team at this point. I will have to give him a chance because I have no choice. I'm not in charge of anything. I can't do anything. So I, I don't trust this guy because he's got an ego. He's got, he feels like, oh, I got to put in my, I got to put in my, uh, you know, concepts, you know, to this, you know, oh, I like your idea, but I think, you know, that's what I'm getting nervous about. Um, But I really hope that this isn't, Nick's not putting like only like 10% of the coach's game plan into it and 90% of his, his concepts going to be into this offense or this defense. Him sitting on defensive meetings, let me tell you something. If they hire a veteran, old-timer, good reputation type coach, whether it's Ron Rivera or Wink, or if it's even Vic Fangio, stay the fuck out of it and stay as far away as possible. Do not involve yourself. Do not get in the way because all you're going to do is put another target on your back all year. And trust me, the play is going to tell us where the co the coordinators are at. If the coordinators are actually controlling the whole situation. So we will find out soon enough. We will find this if this is going to be a shit show or not. Nick says one thing, and then he says, oh, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to involve some of the things we've done the last few years have been very successful. Yeah, stop running with Jalen Hurts. Keep the guy healthy. Let him get 100% healthy. I want his speed back. You know, you know, it's just, it's really annoying. I, I, I the press conference was, was fine. You know, uh, Brian Johnson's definitely gone 100%. Uh, the relationship between Nick and, and, and Jalen Hurts uh, Nick saying that him and Jalen Hurts have met every single week, talked about the offense every single week. Well, dude, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And between these leaks coming out that Jalen Hurts will be like, okay, so you meet with Jalen Hurts and Jalen Hurts is going to say, okay, well, this is what I want changed this week. And Nick's like, yeah, sure, we'll do it. And then they get into the game plan during practice and it's not going Jalen Hurts' way. And that's fucked up. And I think part of it is because why did A.J. Brown not talk to the media for two weeks? Why did A.J. Brown, uh, before the Giants game, the last Giants game in the regular season, say, oh, we need it. We got the players together multiple times during the week and said, hey, we need to believe in the coaching staff. And the players just seem to like, seems like a lot of players were just not, when you're losing the same way and no adjustments are made, and trust me, us fans aren't stupid with our own two eyes. We like the, it was actually kind of fun really screwed up, but fun to guess what play they would call on third down or second down or when they would sub DeAndre Swift out. Like it was literally a game show for us because we knew we predicted uh, 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 what the Eagles were doing every time they got on the field and how they line up. No motion, empty backfield set. They got, they got away from the RPO, nothing under center. Throw a dagger shot downfield, audibling on third and short out of a run to a pass. Taking DeAndre Swift out, subbing Kenny G in on stupid moments, like making things so predictable. Tired of it. Tired of it. So, that's all I got to say about the press conference and Vic Fangio. So, this whole thing, it really, it really depends on Nick. It really depends on Nick. So, I didn't like... A couple things that he said, but when he says that the OCs will bring in their own, the OC and DCs will bring in their own scheme, but he's going to piggyback off of the and insert some of his ideas. And I hope he doesn't have final say. He's obviously a higher rank. You see, he's a head coach over coordinator. He's a higher rank. I get it. But seems like 
Nick, it seems like the front office really gave Nick a lot of control. So that's all I got to say about all that bullshit going on. Now let's go over to the offensive coordinator position, which I think is interesting. Another one. So obviously um, you had, you know, Cliff Kingsbury recently. Um, you know what I mean? Jim Bob Cooter, Frank Reich's been a rumor, um, you know, a few guys. Uh, but um, Gerard Johnson uh, from the Texans as the QB coach. Now he's worked with CJ Stroud. Look at the season that young man has played this year. Fantastic. Fun fact too, uh, Gerard Johnson was a, he was a undrafted free agent for the Eagles in 2000, I think 2011. Um, and strongly considering him as the OC, this is just a due diligence type interview, but yeah, I mean, a guy that's been really good with CJ Stroud knows how to use the quarterback really well. And, um, don't know what else he could do. I don't know how much he implements the passing game or, you know, if he's just a quarterback coach, you know, how much can he implement as a play caller? I don't know, but from a quarterback standpoint, yeah, he's done a really good job with him and, uh, you know, could bring Jalen Hurst to the, uh, the next level or a better level that he's ever been. Um, you know, so that's another guy on the list as of right now. Uh, he's worked with Kyle Shanahan. He's worked in multiple, multiple offensive schemes throughout his career, um, in the offensive room. So, um, you know, he's got a, he's got a good reputation and, and see where it goes with him. Um, and lastly on the list is Jason Kelsey, uh, having a sprain MCL. Now, if Kelsey's retiring, why would he even... Why would he announce he's got a sprain MCL? You know, maybe it's just because he's on his podcast and wants to talk about it. But I mean, Howie Roseman restructured his contract and saved two point five million dollars going into next season. Um, you know, so it's looking like Kelsey's coming back. Hasn't been official yet. Um, so it's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. So I I feel like he will come back. Um, which he's well needed, no doubt. You know, Jurgens will look like he's going to stay at right guard. We'll see what goes on with Tyler Steen in the offseason. If they cross him the right tackle, maybe. Um, you know, uh, Suo Peta could play both guard spots. And Lane Johnson uh, will need a replacement in a couple of years. So that's going to be another target for the Philadelphia Eagles, a backup right tackle, a future right tackle. I hope maybe, you know, Tyler Steen could play the other side, or at least they could put him there and try to see what he could do. So. Other than that, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, it's been a lot. It was a big, big... A lot of the press conference was all PR, stupid statements, the same old, oh, we have to get better, and oh, we came in at the end of the season, it was horrible, and uh, you know, uh, we got to see how we can get better. You know, I'm not going to go through all that dumb PR bullshit that we hear every single year. Now, the reason why the, the end of the year press conference took a little bit longer is because uh, they just want to give the guys a day off on Tuesday. They just they, they could have done the press. Usually do the end of the year press conference the day after the, they lose the game, playoff game, um, or the day after the season's over. Um, but they gave the guys off, and then the snow came in, and we had a snowstorm on the east side. Um, I know that, you know, I had a lot of snow too. Um, so they canceled, you know, so they didn't have anybody all weekend in the offices and whatever, all week. Uh, so that's why they were a little bit late with the press conference. So Vic Fangio, guys, it looks like it's not official yet, but it looks like it's going to be. Um, how do you feel about it? Um, and yeah, do you believe Nick on staying off or do you think that Nick is going to still worm his way through to give ideas and screw everything up once again for next season? Because at this point, I think Howie Roseman's on the hot seat next year. And I definitely think Nick is going to be on the hot seat next year. As much as I don't think Howie Roseman will ever get fired. I feel like this is like the year where the collaborations has to be, there's always been collaboration. I don't really worry about that too much, but you gotta let these coaches coach and let these coaches get the players they want. Um, free agency is gonna be nuts. The draft is gonna be nuts, and we'll see if this becomes official. It, it sounds like it. But you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes it up, fall slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.